welcome to Hashtag Tour to Tour. My name is Leanne Johnson Anderson, and I am joined, as always, by Spencer Fearon. And this week, British and Commonwealth Super Featherweight Champion Martin J. Ward. Martin, well done for Saturday, winning the Commonwealth belt and your Lonsdale belt outright. How Thank was you it? Very much. Yes, Can it see it there. It was a it was a great night, great night for my career, and I'm um, very excited and overwhelmed and with all the support and everything and to get the British title for life it was like a, as, a, as a kid it's like a dream come true sort of thing. And celebrations now as well? Yeah definitely yeah, yeah. we'll be all celebrating. Oh great okay well we'll get started. First tweet from Jordan Harrison where are you aiming to go next a shot at the European title or are you most interested in approaching world level? Yeah well I'll be pushing on for it for the European, I think next. Um, I'll leave it down to my team, but I think I'm ranked number two in Europe now. So ideally, I reckon that's the, that's the way forward. Yeah. Hi, my name is Mike. Has tweeted in. Would you give Anthony Kakacha a rematch, considering the first fight was so close? Yes, I would. I would fight anybody, and um, that's the guy I am. Uh, if, they, if there's demand for the fight, I'll, I'll definitely give him a rematch. What did you think of the fight, Spencer? <sighs> I was speaking to him earlier. What a fight. Really, really good fight. Both guys left it all on the line. And I'm saying, weren't you hot in there? Because I, I was sat ringside and it was it was roasting in there. Yeah. Like underneath the lights and everything. How did you feel in there? Huh? I, I didn't feel the heat to be honest. I was just, yeah. just concentrating on the, like the, the task yeah. at hand. But you, you was telling me earlier on yeah. you were struggling with the heat. Yeah, I, I was struggling with the heat. You know what I mean? And so it was, it was very hot. So I don't know how you coped. But it was an excellent fight, and I, I'm going to tell you, I would love to see a rematch in that. Yeah. But sometimes, you, you know, to, to excuse the cliche pun, but you want to move on to bigger and better things. Yes. But right. as an entertainment, as a boxing fan, I wouldn't mind seeing that again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Steve Parsons has tweeted in, how tough a challenge is Willie Monroe Jr. for Billy yeah. Joe Saunders? Is this his hardest fight to date? Not, it's not Billy Joe's hardest fight. I think Billy Joe's hardest fight should have been Andy Lee. Um, and Billy Joel's hardest fight could have been Chris Eubank Jr. So I'm not saying that this is his hardest fight. Um, this is not the name that I was expecting that for them to say that who Billy Joel Saunders was going to fight. This is a kind of safe defence for Billy Joel Saunders because I think Billy Joel Saunders is head, above, head and shoulders above anything that Willie Monroe is going to bring to the table. And I could see by the body language which Billy Joel was saying, I could see it in you. Willie Monroe, that you don't really want it. And when you mean that you don't want it, I'm not saying you don't want to fight, but you don't want to get down and dirty. Billy Joel's prepared to go down and dirty, and I can see Billy Joel comprehensively winning this fight, maybe even a late stoppage. What do you think, Martin? Is yeah. this a tough challenge for Billy Joel? It's a um, tough ch challenge, but I think I've got full confidence in Billy Joel doing the job, doing a good job on Millie, uh, Willie Monroe, to be honest. Um, as Spencer said, it's, it's not the name that we were looking for no. against Billy Joel. Um, I but, thought we were going to hear David Lemieux. That's what I thought. I was looking yeah, forward. I was like, All right, it's going to be David Lemieux. It's going to be right. And we didn't hear Yeah, that would be a big fight. That yeah, would be a tough task for Billy Joe and a and more exciting fight to, to get up for everybody. But um, I think he, he does a, a good job on Willie Munro. I do. Tony Jones, what are Eubanks' chances in the World Boxing Super Series? I think they're fantastic for the simple fact that what. It's weird, his father, Chris Eubank Sr., was a more concussive one-hit puncher, right? But didn't have the work rate of his son. His son has a fantastic engine. And what people need to realise is that when people say, well, does the, um, for him being in this competition, he punches enough, he, he has enough variety and enough repertoire in his firing shots that could give anyone inside yeah. um, this Super Series trouble and come out victorious. Trust me. So he he's one of the he's one of the picks to be the favourite in this. The champ underneath here has just put Eubank won convincingly, but does he have the power? Still a question mark for me. How is that a question he's mark? Got, Did you see him? He's got he's got the power to, to trouble anybody, um, Eubank. But he puts he puts his punches together very nicely, and he's got the power to keep anybody away from him getting in his personal space if he wants to. So he's as an all-round fighter, I think he's a great fighter. He's got, he's got a bit of everything, I think, you about Yes, yeah, he, he has. And you go watch. What, if, you, if you did watch the fight on, on the weekend with Chris Eubank Jr. versus Arthur Abraham, mm -hmm. which he completely annihilated the guy, never gave him time to set. He throws so many punches. And the reason why he's not so much of a concussive puncher, because he, he over-wraps, because he suffers from bad hands, so he over-wraps the knuckles. 
Um, so he's uh, really, really padded, right? So he's not getting it. So maybe him going into this championships um, of this Super Series, maybe should lose um, um, less padding on on he, wrapping his hands. He, he goes for ha hand speed as well and flurries and flashy yeah. combinations and stuff. He's not. A con con concussive, like yeah, right. One one punch knockout artist, but but they weigh you a, down. He's a he's a good all round fighter. He's got he's got other assets to his game that that brings it back. The boxing madman has tweeted in with all the talk about Eubank and Groves. Should people be favouring Smith or Scogland in the World Boxing Super Series instead? Um, no, I tell you who the dark horse is. Cox is the dark horse in this <laughs> this series. Trust me, believe me on that. That guy, he's dangerous. I'm telling you, he's not a lot of hype, but you go speak to the guys in the gym, he's the guy I spoke to Eubank Senior on, on a few days ago, and he was saying, Spencer, this, um, this guy, um, Cox, he's, um, he's dangerous. Is he as good in the gym, though, as he is sparring? In the boxing ring, yeah. as he is in the You know what? We, we usually, see loads of guys could be fantastic in, yeah. in sparring and can't bring, it to, can't bring it to the ring, but I believe that he can because He's had it's been taken away from him a little bit where where he he didn't he, he had gaps in his professional career and I think he actually wants it I think he's the guy to to look out for um, but nobody inside this competition can be overlooked because anybody on no, the on the right night yet yeah, potentially could win the whole yeah. competition. That's what right. do you think about the World Boxing Super Series? I think it's great. I yeah. think it's great for for the super middleweight division as well and all the they're all in the mix and they're all gonna. Actually, get a chance to fight each other. The politics side of things is getting pushed out a bit, and they're all actually getting matched up. If there was and, a super um, featherweight one, would you want to be in it? I'd love to be in it. Yeah, of course. With Javante Davis and Lomachenko. Yeah, I'd love to be in the mix yeah. with them now. Yeah, the big fights. That's that's what that's what we dream of as kids. Being in them superstar fights. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, if there was a super featherweight one, I'd definitely be uh, getting Eddie to chuck my name in there. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan Hanley has tweeted in: Would Martin consider a domestic fight with Liam Walsh? Uh, I'd, I'd fight anyone. I'm, I'm the sort of kid. Um, I live down to my team. Is it a fight that team. you would like, though? Uh, at the minute, Liam hasn't. Why are you crossed. instigating? Why are you? Just asking. Okay. <laughs> at, the, at the moment, um, Liam just lost. Bit last time, uh, Liam Walsh. Uh, kind of title, nudged so. home in the last two or three rounds. Came down the stretch. Had this down the stretch as quite it's a, ago, a and, little um, bit the stronger and a little bit the fresher. Well, the fight was going to get made, but obviously Liam was moving on to to world to world levels and. And he vacated the title and moved on. But um, if there's if there's demand for the fight and people want to see that fight, I'd, I'd happily fight. I'd fight anybody. Joseph Shaw, Martin, where do you reckon you will be in the next 18 months? In the next 18 months, I, I see this on Twitter, <laughs> and uh, it made me laugh. I, I replied back to him, um, either a world champion or in the local pub telling everybody <laughs> what I could have, would have, should have been. <laughs> hopefully the first one, then. Well, hopefully the first one, yeah. Hopefully a world champion. Where can you see him in 18 months, Spencer? Listen, I remember seeing this young man box on the undercard of Tony Bellew versus Edison Miranda, right? And I got into the change room, I said, you have, like, an American style of boxing. Like... From what, so I know who your heroes be. Who, who are the guys that you used to watch? Yeah. Tony, Tony Sims get me to watch uh, all 50s fighters. Right, and I rate Tony because that's that's my that's what I like watching. And you got old school skills for a young man. So all you got to do is keep on applying yourself. And, and like the stars the limit, the sky's the limits because anyone could turn around and say, well, in 18 months. But what I'm saying, you're you're unbeaten professional yeah. fighter. And you're gaining, you're get, you're not getting quick knockouts. You're going 12 rounds. Yeah, you know what you experience. learn. You get that's that's where you learn the game, and that's what you are doing. So you just got to keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah, and it. seriously, the sky's the limits. Okay. Yeah. Well, my thanks to Spencer and Martin. Join us next week for more hashtag Tour to Tour. Or look at iTunes for the podcast. Sky Sports, feel it all.